that continues to flow throughout the time to today. With remembering the Buddha, I would also like to acknowledge the gracious presence of respected secretary of Ministry of Culture, Tourism and Civil Aviation, Surisa, the CEO of the Nepal Tourism Board, Secretary, respected Secretary Alicia from Mofa, all the distinguished honorable participants, distinguished scholars, professionals, President of NATA, entire family of all the travel and tourism industries related to this event. First of all, it is my great privilege to welcome you on behalf of the Buddhist Sangha here in Delhi. Perhaps I believe that if we go down in the history, we'll find that Buddhist pilgrimage is perhaps the one of the oldest surviving travel system in the ancient world. 2,500 years ago, when Buddha was faced with a very diverse society around him, we all know that he came from a very humble kingdom at the base of Himalayas, known as Kapilabastu. He was a prince of a small Sakya estate, and within a short time, he became a celebrated and much loved and treasured spiritual guide of all 16 great Mahajanapadas at the time. How did it happen? I believe it lies in the Buddha's teaching. For the first time, when Buddha had 60 disciples, in his first teaching to the disciples, he asked them, Charata Bhikkhave Charikam Bahuja Nehitaya Bahuja Nusikhaya. He asked the monks to do yatras, to do charika, to travel this wide, diverse, and strange world. Why? Why to travel? Bahujan Hitai, Bahujan Shukai, for the welfare of many, for the well being of many. This was Buddha's way of uniting this vastly diverse society that was fragmented due to race, ethnicity, geographical locations. So, Buddhist pilgrimage, Buddhism, highly emphasizes travel as a mode of practicing Dharma. Travel and pilgrimage as a way to reach out and to know this, that this entire world, however diverse it is, it is one single human family. We know, and I look forward to that our scholars in the next sessions, today and tomorrow, there will be enlightening us that perhaps the first of the disciplines started to appear when Buddha down under the Sala trees in Kushinagara forest. All the monks gathered around him. They requested, Buddha, what should we do when you are no more in the world physically? And this great teacher of men, who never in his life had made any personal request to the monks and nuns, before passing away, he said, that the future devotees, faithful followers in future, to travel first to the garden where I was born, the Mimi. It is amazing that in the past, we find right after passing away Mahaparinibbana of the Buddha, perhaps the first pilgrims started arriving in the Bay. We also know that from BC, to up to at least 13th century AD, there was unbroken pilgrimage happening in many, many years. It is a miracle that in those times for so many, yes, over 2,000 years, we have unbroken line of people 
coming from the very vast continent of Asia. So Buddhist travel is not new. This gives us hope that such an ancient practice, today uh, there are more than 550 million faithful followers of the Buddha all over the world. In a sad to say fate, we find, however, less than 0.5 of the total population. It's well placed to connect with Buddhist countries like Cambodia, Sri Lanka, Thailand, and so forth. We must get work together. Also, with Indian travel agencies, government of India, to complete the Buddhist circuit properly for the benefit of all. Then the mini can become a gateway to the Buddhist circuit in India. At the same time, we also need growing networking, reach out to entrepreneurs, to businesses, and travel ventures in the Buddhist countries working together. I strongly believe that forums like this, the Buddhist International Travel Mart, becomes such a good occasion to bring everybody together, to network, to reach out, to know each other's strength. I believe that the coming future, we will travel to seek peace, we'll travel to seek inspiration, we'll travel to seek harmony in the world. The current generation of humanity all over the world, we're facing so many numerous challenges that are beyond our own tools. We must find new hope, new inspiration. I strongly believe that Buddhist sectors, especially the 2500 years of glorious history of the Buddhist Dharma, how it has inspired this vast continent, how it established ancient network of connectivity, exchange of information, exchange of knowledge, wisdom. I strongly believe that this would be a great draw to the people of the future. I look forward to listening to your deliberations with these four mistresses. May your visit in Lumbini be very successful. Bhagavati Sarvamanda. Ladies and gentlemen, yet another inspiring book which was released on the occasion of 2567 Buddha Jayanti celebration. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen.